Okay, I got asked on Instagram, what exercises do you do for patellofemoral pain? Now, that's a big question, and I've got a whole program on that. And I suggest if you want to know how to get rid of patellofemoral pain over 12 weeks, you go and have a look at the program. So today's daily rehab is about patellofemoral pain, but in a lunge. So if you're one of those people who are doing lunges or you've done lunges in the past and you're getting pain around the patellofemoral joint, so pain around your kneecap, or you don't do lunges because of the pain, then this one's for you. I'm gonna go through lunges from start to finish. If you've got patellofemoral pain, and then how to do that lunge, and then how to progress it through to doing a proper lunge and with weights. So, first thing, when you've got patellofemoral pain with a lunge, usually what happens is the pain usually is on the back leg. So when people go down into a lunge, they go, oh yeah, that hurts, I don't like doing it. Some people, when they're doing the lunge, they feel it in the front knee as well. It depends how weak you are. It depends if you've got an injury to the kneecap, it depends if you've got good quads, whether you've got bad quads, whether you've got enough VMO bulk, but also sometimes people have cartilage issues. Maybe they've got fissures in the cartilage, maybe they've had old patellofemoral dislocations and they've got cracks in there, maybe their cartilage is soft because they're not doing enough exercise perhaps, there could be a myriad of problems. Regardless, the classic lunge vertical is going to be a problem for those people. So if you're one of those people who gets pain, patellofemoral pain from lunges, doing a upright vertical lunge is a no-go for you. Okay, and you've probably discovered that already. What I like people getting or changing is getting their angles different so they take the weight for the first thing out of the back leg and put it in the front leg. And the reason being is when you take the weight out of the back leg and you go forward, then that's less load here. There's less sheer force through that leg because that's not doing as much load. Yes, I'm putting more weight through the front leg when I go forward, but I'm doing a compressive load, which is what the patellofemoral joint likes when it's weak or injured doesn't like shearing load when you go back and load back through here, okay? So don't be concerned or worried that, oh, I'm putting my knee forward past my toe. I got told not to do that. It's okay when there's a compressive force there. You just don't want to do knee forward with your weight back like this. So that is not a good force for your knee. That's a shearing force. That's maybe what you've been doing is you've been shoving your knee forward but leaning backwards or staying upright. So what you've got to do, if you're going to go knee forward, you've got to go forward as well. And at the end of the day, that end position is the same position for your ankle, knee, hip and back as a squat. So when I come down into a squat, my knees go forward. And if you've been doing squats, your knees are going forward. But this position, if I show you this way, when I come down and forward and I want my sort of, if I look in the mirror, I can see myself doing this. If I show you this way, if I come down and forward, I want my shin angle here, the same as my back thigh angle, the same as my back angle. So I'm all forward at about 30 degrees, if you like, roughly. Okay, so I don't want my shin vertical or my back vertical, I want them all forward. So the, the normal lunge, or what we're trying to achieve down the track, when you get stronger, is everything going forward. And if you look at that position, that is the position I would be when I'm in a squat. And that's why it makes sense for knees. But how do you get to that position? So what you do is you do the same position as your upper body and your back thigh, but your front shin stays a bit more vertical. So, this is what we call sort of stage one lunges. This is what we call a regression lunge. So regressing from a normal, what we call a physio lunge, is doing a hybrid between forward and staying vertical. What goes forward is your back thigh and your upper body, but your shin stays relatively vertical. All right, so I'm trying to get my body weight over that knee, I'm trying to get my body weight over my knee, all right? So this compresses forces down, but I'm not loading that knee forward because if that kneecap is not strong enough in the cartilage, or my muscle tissue is not strong enough, or my hip control is not good enough, that when I 
And when I come down, my knee starts rolling in, okay? I don't want to be having that knee forward in a shearing position, all right? So when you lunge to start off with, come forward at the waist, straight back. Take the weight out of the back leg, put it in the front, and I mean down into the heel. And so what happens here is because I'm doing heaps of, heaps of hip flexion, I'm doing lots of glute work. Now, history shows that if you have a talofemoral pain, you usually got pretty bad hip control or weak glutes, as you like. And when you come into a movement like this, if your knee rolls that way, you can get patellofemoral pain. Right? So the hip control is going to be crucial. To get more hip work, you have to do a ton of you know, clams and bridges and all the glute work to get this up to speed, but then you actually have to use that in the movement pattern. Okay? There's no point just doing all that work and then forgetting about your knee. So if you go and bend at the hip, you'll get that glute work. That's why we are getting people bending forward down into a lunge, okay? But the first stage, like I said, is just don't let that knee come too far forward. And then you progress to a normal lunge. So your normal physio lunge, when that knee goes forward, okay, you can go from, say, staying vertical to every day that you get a bit better, let the knee go further forward. Till eventually that knee is going right forward and that shin angle matches your back angle, matches your back thigh angle, okay? Few things, few tips for that. When you push up, like with all lunges, think about pushing the ground away from you. So, if I'm here in this position, I go down, my knee's now coming forward because I've got a bit stronger, I'm, I can handle that load position. When I'm in this position here, I wanna then think about pushing my heel down to bring me back to 50-50. So if I start at 50-50, I wanna get about 80% of the weight through the front leg and then drive that front leg down and that's gonna fire me here. If I get more hip control here, that supports the knee, controls the knee, stops it rolling inwards, okay, keeps it in line, which adds to getting this less and less sore, getting this stronger, okay? So don't just think about kneecap and quads and you've got to think about what's going on in the hip. So when you're doing these lunges, why lunges are quite great for patellofemoral problems, and you probably thought they were sore and they're bad for them, but they're actually great, is that it uses so much hip control on one leg and you're supported by the back leg. So a really good one to put into your program early if you can start with that regression one and then progress along. Now, once you've got the physio lunge working well, Instead of putting load on first, instead of carrying weights, or instead of doing dynamic lunges or anything like that, I would work on more and more hip control because half the reason you're probably getting patellofemoral pain is because your hip is not working very well. So, what I suggest you do, grab a mini power band, so not the big one, the mini one, wrap it around something, Put that in the front leg, and this is a physio lunge with band load. Now the band load is trying to pull me medially. Okay, this is why I call a lateral band because I'm pulling out laterally. And what that does is gives me the external rotation in the hip, which is what I need in my glutes to keep my knee tracking in line with my foot to help stop the hip rolling in problem causing my patellofemoral pain. So you're trying to, this is your weights. This is your sort of interim from physio lunges to doing lunges with weights. This is your weight. It's the lateral load which gives it weight for the glute without me loading down on that patellofemoral joint. So there is no difference on the kneecap for me doing this, right? But there's a difference here. All right, so I've got more weight in my glutes, but I've got no, no more weight in my knees. So it's a very clever way of you progressing with that intermediate step before you think I'm just gonna carry some weights and make my legs stronger. So down to there, and this will really challenge you to go, when you go down, it'll, that band is wanting me to do that. So it gives me one, I have to pull out, and it gives me a guideline that I have to do. Like, okay, I have to pull out 
which fires me here. But the tension is a feedback reflex mechanism here, which makes me fire my buttock. So I'm getting actually more activation by putting that band on. But don't fall into the trap of trying to, oh, let's do that now to get some more activation. You can only get, you've got to have enough strength here before you put this on because otherwise it's just going to yank your knee in and it's going to cause more problems. So that is definitely what I would use as your next stage after your physio lunge is go physio lunge with a lateral band, meaning it's pulling immediately, you're pulling laterally. Okay, never do it around the other way. So don't put it this way and think that it's keeping your knee out. It's not gonna teach you anything in your butt. Like, it's just doing nothing there, okay? So don't feel like, oh, I'll just put it that way to pull my knee out so I keep it in line. Use it the other way so you're actively pulling it out. You're getting some benefit that way. You're not getting any benefit the other way. So once you've mastered that and you've cooked your glute, then you can go for low. Now, two options. You can either go, well, there's sort of three options, but two options. Weighted lunges with dumbbells, kettlebells, even a bar if you want to. And this will give you your load bearing. So here, same drill. Get your lunge set up, down and forward with the weights, driving back, okay? Now putting you know, an extra sort of 10% of your body weight, and that's more than 10%, that's 20% of my body weight, is going to really start making these things work. And you're going to feel that the next day. So just be careful how much load you put on there because you're doing a single, single type leg exercise. Okay, it might feel great during, but you don't want to be sore in your kneecap afterwards because you can always overcook this. You put too much weight on, even though you do a good lunge, you're still going to feel it the next day. So make sure that that weight is around about 10% to start with of your body weight, depending on how heavy you are. But yeah, you know, this is 16 kilos, so that's going to be 20% of my body weight, right? So if you're just starting out, you might want to do two, if you weigh 80, 80 kilos, four and four, all right? So that would be one way of doing it. If you don't have weights at home, but you do have bands, then you could do it this way. Now, the kind thing about bands, is one, they're easy, but accessible, but for recovering patellofemoral knee pain, what they do is they provide a sort of reprieve when your knee's vulnerable. And what I mean by that is, if I put a band up on my shoulder like that, so there's my load, okay? Now you can either put it on your shoulder that way, or you can have it crossing over, so you go over one side and doing it this way, okay? That sort of position. Depends on the person what you want to do. I sort of kind of like this because then the band's away from me. So if I've got over my opposite shoulder, the band load's here, which is sort of feeling Roughly maybe about that much. Okay, it's very hard to tell how much is, how much it is, but from that position, my hands are free, I can balance. Okay. But when I come down into this position, the band is less. So when my knee's vulnerable in this flexion position, when it's in the groove there, when the two surfaces are compressed together, maybe I've got some soft cartilage, maybe I've got some tracking issues, maybe my VMO or my quad here is not strong enough. When I push up. It gets harder and harder and harder. So when I'm more and more stable and less vulnerable, that's when it's the hardest, okay? So it's a variable load, which is sort of quite kind on joints that need maybe a little bit of a segue into doing weights, all right? So if you're one of those people that you find weights are too heavy or the weights you've got are too heavy, so maybe you've only got two eights, and you think, well, 16 kilos is too much, I feel it the next day, then do a band like this pushing up, and the, the good thing about this is it helps you control, so you're getting a bit of balance work done here, right, before you go on the weight. So that could be your interim step between, you know, going from no weights to weights, as you go physio lunge, banded, and then loaded with weights. So that would be your progression right up to getting to weights. If you get to the point where you're going, okay, I need to do more, you don't have any more weights, Simply combine the two, and that's why I talked about the third one. So here you are, got your weight, your weight load here. And this is really for people at home. Like if you're in the gym, obviously you just can just add more weights. But some people, like me, like having a combination between a variable and a static load. So now I can go through my lunge, 
in that position there. So I've got my variable load of the band, I've got my constant load of my weight. Okay, and that's just trying to work on that. Make sure that you really, when you do this exercise, one last tip is when you are pushing up through that knee, some people, I think I had someone today, said, do I push up or do I push backwards? It's halfway in between. You push up and back, okay? Now, to do that, you push your foot down. So you think down, but your body's going up. But when you push up, if you like, push your body up and back at the same time. Don't try and go up and then cruise back and sit on the back leg. At the same time, don't just push your knee straight like that. So if you're one of those people who have got patellofemoral pain and you don't like lunges, give this a shot and see how you can progress. But if you're still struggling, I suggest you have a look at our full program that goes for 12 weeks on patellofemoral rehab. That's on our website at physiorehab.com. See you next time.